in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Second Peter chapter 1, please. Let's begin our reading from verse 5. Character, write it down. If you want longevity of impact, you want to be the vessel that hosts the glory of God for a long time. Neglect this and you do it at the peril, the expense of your relevance. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5. Please look up everybody. And besides this, giving diligence, add to, everybody say add to, Add to. That's right. Thank God for the ones you have. But there is still something to add to. It says add to your faith. Virtue. Moral excellence. And to virtue. Knowledge. Verse 6. Reading to 10. And to knowledge. Self-control. And to self-control. Patience. And to patience. Godliness. 7. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity or love. Verse 8. If these things be in you, including the ones you have added, they make that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. It says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. For he had forgotten that he was purged of his old sins. Final verse 10. It says, Wherefore the rather brethren, use these additions to give diligence so that you will make your calling and your election sure. It says, For if, this, if ye do these things, what is the, the prophecy there? Ye shall never fall. Ye shall never fall. Ye shall never fall. Anybody praying for your downfall will only be wasting their time. Because in addition to this, that if you can add, that means no matter your spirituality, your rema, if you don't add character, there is a problem with the longevity of your impact. And unfortunately, respectfully so, many have become victims of this. In the night, I'm going to teach you on empowerment since we are doing the miracle service. And I'll be teaching you that there are three things that follow mantles you see there are spiritual backings in terms of angels angelic activities that signify certain revelations according to revelation 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus which he gave unto his servant john the bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel so there are angels that don't follow men they follow certain anointings. For instance, when, thank God for your gracious protocol system, we have people from the DSS, the military, and all of this, and, and I'm so thankful for, you know, their intelligence. And I just sat back and watching all of them professionally communicating with themselves. I think you should celebrate them. Now, watch that. If the governor of your state is to come here now, in the capacity as a governor are we together there are certain people and certain military paraphernalia that comes with him they don't come to him as a person they follow the office so when certain mantles are on you i'm telling you three things i'm giving you a teaser for tonight number one is that there are certain angelic backings that follow you number two men will follow you but number three there are spirits that are attached not to men but attached to mantles demonic spirits now they don't follow men they have no business following you they follow whoever is the carrier of that mantle so if you are Samson Delilah starts looking for you not because you have any business with her she's
she was assigned to follow whoever is Samson. Say amen. That is the reason why God does not answer certain prayers of more anointing. Do you know why? Because the battles that you are about to confront, you don't have the spiritual intelligence to maintain victory at that level. So God will love you by keeping you in that state until revelation comes. I went up by revelations. Galatians 2 and verse 2. And I went up by revelation. You don't go up by desire. It takes revelation. Are we learning? Character. Please look at me. Character is very powerful because it sustains the ability to preserve that which God places on your life. There are many, many men of God. There are many people who do not have character. Character over the lust of the eyes. Please look at me. The Bible categorizes them into three. Remember, love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. The Bible says, if any man, doesn't matter who you are, loves the world, he said the love of the Father is not in you. Then he says, all that is in the world, and lists, categorizes them into three. Number one, the lust of the flesh. Number two, the lust of the eyes. Number three, the pride of life. Everything that will bring you down is in these three categories. What is the lust of the flesh? The impulses that come to you by reason of wearing a more a mortal body. Gluttony. Moral deficiencies in terms of immorality. All of these things are lust of the flesh. That means if you did not have a body, there will be no need. I, I hope you know that. Yes. The reason why you are in that kind of trouble is because you have a body. Then number two, lust of the eyes. The temptations and the impulses that come to you by reason of the power of sight. Covetousness. Is it not because you could see? If you were blind, hopefully you would have been safe. But now that you have a pair of eyes, you saw your colleague rising. You saw his membership and bitterness and jealousy. All of these things are product, the side effect of having a pair of eyes. That's why you must pray and sanctify your eyes. That Lord, no matter what my eyes see in the name of Jesus, I will not allow the devil to midwife my sight and my heart. Between my eyes and my heart, let the blood of Jesus purge everything. So that the elements of jealousy am I together now you can be as anointed as whatever what made Saul want to kill David he saw that this young man had a great potential and the women now complicated the matter Saul killed 1,000 David killed 10,000 and Saul said no no this guy must die and he used a javelin it took David having wisdom to run away can I tell you you must trust God to purge your eyes. This unhealthy competition that exists among men of God and all kinds of things. These eyes you see is a gift from God. But these eyes can be a weapon of mass destruction. There are people who went to hell today because of their eyes. That's why the Bible says if your eye causes you to sin, it says pluck it out. It doesn't mean remove, remove it like this. No. You have to understand what the Bible is saying. Are we together now? To pluck it out does not mean to remove it. To plug it out means cause it to lose its strength and efficiency as far as partnering with the devil to destroy you is concerned. When you plug out your eyes, it no longer works. So he's talking about being dead to the flesh holistically. And then number three, the pride of life. I hope you know that the pride of life is different from pride. You cannot have the pride of life until you have results. The pride of life is the self vain glorification that happens at the instance of provable results. So the moment you have results, be careful because you stand the risk of the pride of life. This is what happened to the king in Babylon. He had results and he said, build me a statue of myself, 90 feet pure gold. And everybody, when you hear the sound of the instrument, bow to that image. And some Hebrew boys said, no, we will not do this. We love you, we respect authority. But in this matter, we will not bow. The pride of life. Can I tell you? This kiss I'm showing you will make you a great man of power. Envied by darkness and envied by men. 
one of the assignments of character and that includes humility is to be able to guard you so that you remain you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you you get the glory you got the glory you get the praise you got the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank you so in my life be glorified glorified in my life be glorified be glorified listen by the time you begin to prophesy by the time revelation comes to you and you are dishing out scripture after scripture look at me ladies and gentlemen by the time people begin to sing your praises joshua selman that is when you are closer to the corridors of destruction let me show you the position of a champion in this kingdom this is it you get the glory you get the praise you get the praise you take the honor you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank listen you. there are men immorality could not bring them down there are men money could not bring them down there are men that jealousy could not bring them down but the one thing that pushed them freely was pride and thou shalt say in thy heart that my power and the might of my hand has given me this no man can receive anything except it is given unto him pastors let us stop some of these statements that we make on stage that makes it look like we are uh, mm -mm, be careful i know we came from backgrounds where maybe nobody believed in you by the time you make it you want to rub it in it's unnecessary your assignment is to see Jesus glorified. Some of these statements we make in the name of cliches of ministry. The jealous one is watching. And let me tell you, God can give you something and still fight it if he tries to take his place. There are many, many battles people are fighting that is not by demons. That's why the anointing cannot solve it. Because the anointing was not design, designed to fight God. The anointing only fights what is against God. But if God is the one fighting you, which anointing are you going to use to fight him? Is it not in your Bible that God opposes? What does it mean to oppose? You know how powerful God is? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Listen. This is my final charge. You want to last? Let me show you a powerful key. In all your getting, get humility. Ah, in all your getting, get humility. Don't stand and tell me. Listen, look at me. If I arrange women or men, and I put money, and I put pride, I know most of you would think the highest to overcome is the first one. It may not be true. Some of you may think the highest, the most difficult to overcome is money. It may not be true. Let me tell you the truth. The highest victory of the believer is in the place of conquering pride. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Is that in your Bible? That though he was equal with God, he did not consider it robbery, but he humbled himself when god begins to do mighty things with you it is not unusual for men to sing your praises you become an admiration to everybody listen the person talking to you is not in ignorance i know what i'm saying you see ba when the glory of god comes upon your life if men can they will even worship you it takes you knowing huh? and letting men know that thank God for the things you are doing but for God's sake there is one mightier than I
John got it well initially. I don't know what happened to him later on. He said that I may decrease that he may increase. There are pastors here and there are many people here. By this teaching this morning, God is revealing to you that this is what has stopped you. This is why the church started going down. This is why it looked like the anointing and the grace, nothing was happening again. Because humility is a mysterious lifter. What is humility? Humility is not denying the obvious. Humility is not denying the hand of God. When the hand of God is upon you, it is upon you. If you are blessed, you are blessed. If God has lifted you, you are lifted. Humility is not denying that. Don't confuse humility with simplicity. If you bring me a bottle of water and you bring me a bag of pure water, I will drink the bottle of water. I'm not going to drink the bag of uh, water as a side. That's not humility. No, no. Are we together? Let me tell you what true humility is. Acknowledging Jesus as the basis, the reason for all that you are, and then using that position to glorify him. That is humility. My car, my church, my anointing. Let's be careful. Owners are rebels in this kingdom. Nobody owns anything. We are stewards in this kingdom. Please listen to me. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I'm saying this because after the impartation tonight, some of you will be carrying mysterious graces. You will move like wildfire across your life. But I'm giving you a word of caution now so that when people look at you as, are you a human being with these kinds of miracles happening in your hand? Don't make the mistake that men... Anyway, let me keep quiet there. But there was one of God's generals that made this mistake. He got to a point where because of the excellency of the workings of the spirit in his life, people started calling him certain names and at a point it got into him. I pray all the time and I tell God, walk on my heart. I don't even know the tendencies that are in my heart. Don't sit down and say me, I can never be proud. How much do you have? Where have you gone to? You see, there are some things that is the talk of foolish people. I'm not insulting you. I'm just being sincere. There are certain levels of glory that when you see, sometimes you have to stop yourself from entering it intentionally because of the state of your heart. Hallelujah. There are men of God, as soon as they return from overseas, they said, I would never suffer like this again. I'm not a fool. I've suffered from bet. I suffered while God was training me. And now that I went to America, look at what happened. Ah, no, I won't go back to um, yesterday or, you know, Egypt or whatever name you call it. And that becomes the beginning of compromise. Humility. I prayed a prayer to the Lord years ago and I'm still praying it now even as I'm standing on stage. I said, Lord, may I never know the extent of my impact in the lives of people. It is not necessary. Let me just know that by the privilege of God's grace, you are using my life to bless people. But never allow me know how far the grace you have placed upon my life is blessing people. And God answered that prayer. Lest I be overtaken by pride because it's a human thing. Look, when you are honest with yourself, you are ready to, to experience the mercy of God. But once you put yourself in this big man position, no, I can't do anything, me. Oh, I'm seeing women like trees. I'm seeing money like paper. All those lies is why the devil destroys people. Are we together this morning? A broken and a contrite heart, oh God, that will not despise. I'm already giving us the prayer point for this morning. Because for a few minutes, we are going to cry before the Lord and say, search my heart and try my thoughts, oh God. I do not know the tendencies that are locked up in my heart lest I become a disaster to myself and a disaster to others. Pride. Pride has destroyed many businesses. There was a man in the Bible called a rich fool. Those are two words that don't go together because wealth is a product of wisdom. I don't know how he became a rich fool. What was the foolishness? He built barns and put his wealth there. 
and said, my soul found rest. And the Lord said, nay, for today your soul is required of you. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I've presented to you these templates. These are the templates that those who went before us have followed and have lasted. They have stood the test of time. Let me recap one last time and then we begin to pray. Please make sure you participate in the prayer. Number one, the ministry of strategic and systemic prayer. Giving yourself to prayer as a routine. Number two, the ministry of the word. A careful study of doctrine where you hide the word in your heart and with it you learn the ways of God. Number three, the power of corporate fellowship. Receiving the multifaceted investments of the spirit as given to the body of Christ. Are we together? Number four, what's number four? Yes, competence. As far as your area of call and election is concerned, you are in the fivefold. Give yourself to be competent in that area. You are in business, any of the mountains at all. You are in media, you are a worshiper. Don't come and stand and sing and forget what you are saying. Three of you are singing, only you is singing the third verse. The remaining two have kept quiet because you did not rehearse, you did not practice. Are we together? They should be able to wake you up as a man of God and give you a mic to speak in a conference for one week and you should not be ashamed because the Bible mandates to be instant in season and out of season. And then number five, character. Chiefest among them is humility. Most other character destroying traits partner with pride to walk. Pride is an accelerator of any evil at all. Anything plus pride becomes the worst version of it foolishness plus pride becomes a higher version of foolishness laziness excuse me plus pride becomes a wicked version of laziness pride accelerates any dimension of evil in your life show me a man that has anything wrong in his life but with humility is quick to identify that person and show him mercy thou son of david i am sick but i'm not too proud have mercy on me and salvation came but the scribes and the pharisees they were around every one of jesus's crusade yet they were never blessed by it they were the earliest to come because there was no record of them sitting outside even when there was a crowd yet they were never transformed by the word they were just listening to the mistakes that you would say then they will ask foolish questions now that you have said this let's ask the question which one is better to forgive sins or to raise it all kinds of questions You want to become mighty you want to take yola for jesus you may have heard my teaching on revivals and i did this one in a just concluded conference in the uk also i thought that revival is threefold the first and most important part of revival is person remember the church in pagamos the church in smyrna the church in philadelphia the church in ephesus every one of those churches had commendations and they had things that the spirit of god observed okay you have done well in this but this return to your first love you can get it in the message the purified church you listen to it and pray that is a real revival tool the washing of the water even by the word when it comes to this issue of consecration there are no generals there you die daily there are generals of faith there are generals of power but when it has to do with walking with god and submitting and dying daily nobody calls himself a general there it's only a liar that says i'm a general are we together the bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins god is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness he was speaking to believers this is john's epistle So the earlier your heart is open before God and you go for a retreat, Lord, I found out that in the last one week, there's an unusual desire for money. This loss for money, it looks like my mind has started drifting away. Show me mercy. That's it. The blood comes to speak. Father, it looks like jealousy and pride is already growing in me. 
the day I saw that man of God or saw that woman of God, something happened. It's from the sincerity of my heart. It's as a product of the background I came from. Show me mercy. And the mercy of God comes. You may also want to listen to my message on the mercy of God. Not everybody is a candidate of God's mercy. No. The mercy of God has requirements to walk in your life. You find that in Psalm 51. 51 was the confession of David. When David, remember David together with the prophet, after he killed Uriah and they opened up his sin to him, he cried before God. We have to stop here. Is someone ready to cry before the Lord? We have the next five minutes. I leave you with your maker. For the next five minutes, I want you to cry. I don't know what position fits you. But in the next, please, no moving around. Let's respect God. The next five minutes. The helper of man. The helper of man. The helper of men someone pray repent of prayerlessness repent of carelessness repent of spiritual laxity Please pray, just a few minutes. Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind transform it take my will conform it to yours to yours oh lord to yours to yours Lord, I hand over the ministry. I hand over my reputation. Thank you for the anointing you have given me. But I declare in the name of Jesus that it belongs to you. Hand over your life afresh again to him. Just two more minutes. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Please pray one more minute. You're praying. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me, I will follow. And I have made a choice that I will listen for your voice wherever you may lead, I will go. Hallelujah. 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 We're wrapping up. This is how great men are made. Carry this formula and apply it to any member in your church who submits you will find power i want to speak a word to someone 
and then we'll be done for today and prepare for tonight i sense in my heart that there are men of god here there are women of god there are people who may not be in ministry who have been broken listen carefully and are disappointed some of you have served god sincerely with integrity of heart but it looks like this finances is not answering some of you maybe your homes maybe some of you your children and people even look at you and point and say can you imagine this what a good man but see the kind of useless children that he has some of you are trusting god for money maybe to build your church to be able to have a place of your own i have a word for you and i want you to listen this is what god said i should tell you god will make a way where there seems to be no way i'm not singing he walks in ways we cannot see he will make a way for you and he will be your guide holds you closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way my god will make a way let me prophesy one more time my god will make a way pray for the sick and nothing happened you call for a sincere meeting i've prayed for dead bodies that did not come back to life i walked out of that place sincerely you're not the first to be disappointed you called upon the name of the lord in the meeting and you left in shame don't worry there is a work in his doing in you you told everybody god prospers and your landlord drove you out the church building and your house building in the presence of everybody and people looked at you and said go and walk on yourself this is my final word it may not be for everybody but i'm speaking to someone i perceive in my spirit that there are many leaders here some of you have been fought by people you have been called names and you are saying what is it because i answered the call some of you may not even know what to do now you are even about to give up to say this ministry i'm tired honestly some of you married men and women of god you are about to regret because it looked like you had a better life and you now came to rubbish yourself can i tell you you never go down with god you can fail alone but you cannot fail with god you cannot fail with god take it down for me let me comfort somebody before we close will you hold on through the storm listen to me please hold on to his word your life will soon reveal he's the lifter of men the lifter of men man of god hear me will you hold on through the storm will you hold on to his word even though you are crying your story is about to change by the lifter of men the lifter of men many years ago nobody knew me then i was invited to go for a meeting i prayed i fasted it was raining the meeting was not very far from my house and the people were waiting for me i had a choice to just stay back there or to walk towards the meeting and I said Lord for you not for any name I carried my Bible and I stepped out in that rain and while the rain was beating me I was going with joy eventually I got a bike and I climbed that bike when I got to the church they did not even keep a seat for me it was when I got there that the people just pushed someone you know I just came in and they dressed people and kept a seat there I was drenched but I was happy and then they acted drama they sang they rapped they did all kinds of things and then when it was the time to come and preach they just passed a little paper and said please because of time let me just walk with 10 or 15 minutes and you are imagining after praying and all of that that was a pruning and a making by God working on your character and I finished with all my heart those days when you finish praying I didn't even know there was something called honorarium. 
and then the way they honor you is as if you tell them to go because it's until you climb the bike first then you see 2a you know this 2a exercise book that they tear half of it they just put something no no please god bless you all right no problem well when you come just just do that on the ground eh? the lord honor you thank you i really feel embarrassed for these kinds of things my apologies please carry drop it in your film basket thank you hallelujah and step by step there were times where they would invite me and they did not even know how i arrived there but i still went gradually i'm comforting you because don't abort something precious that is being birthed because of offense i went to preach somewhere they did not they, or i'm a pastor and they said well we have a brother here come and preach don't worry it does not kill anything it was a time to sing and they invited every other person and then they gave you five minutes they said please can you just raise if it's three verses sing one no problem go and sing it it's an honor to serve the king serve him with all your heart because when you are faithful in little you are faithful in much in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that for many of you you begin your journey from today that reveals the glory of god upon your life shout a loud amen i decree and i declare that as you begin to walk in keeping with these mysteries that of prayer that of the word that of fellowship that of competence and that of character even humility may a new you begin to evolve may a powerful you begin to evolve may you that is full of wisdom begin to evolve may the glory of god rise so marvelously upon your life may you become a man to be wondered at may you become a praise even to the nations in the name of jesus christ now for tonight let me encourage you let me let my voice with his lordship the bishop to encourage you tonight who have the time to be ministering to people it is a miracle and an impartation service that is when you'll be receiving there's no time now to begin to do any impartation please i want you to invite particularly men and women of god let them come when god sends a word to jacob it is because he wants it to be lightened upon israel are we together now that we stand here ministering does not mean we are better than anybody it's just the, the privilege of the grace of god and that which god gives is for the edification of the body corporately hallelujah so invite your loved ones those who are hungry and crying invite your memberships whether there's no space inside if you have to sit on the roof sit there but make sure your heart is open to receive to be delivered from every kind of yoke and as I will always do at the permission of his lordship, may I request that you come with your prayer request or some of the ushers you can have a, maybe a prayer, whatever it is, so that people can write their prayer requests. The Bible says, unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. We'll be lifting up a, a cry to heaven to visit families and to speak over the territory of Yola because it's a new season and it's a time of birthing the new it's a time for a new dimension of the glory of God to come. For now, may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 